All right, guys, so um, I'm going to go ahead and I know the last video got uh, cut off. But um, for number 22, the answer was 11 over 12. OK, so remember, it said from four fifths pounds package of uh, ground beef, a one fourth pound hamburger was made from that. So we wanted to do subtraction. You should get 11 over 20. All right, so now let's look at 23. And for number 23, it says, write decimal notation for 15 being divided by 100,000. Okay, so the way we're going to do that one is TBO. So I'm going to write TBO because, again, every time you want to change a fraction to a decimal, you have to do division, which is the top and bottom out. Okay, so for this one, I have 15 being divided by the 100,000. Uh oh, sorry about that. This comma shouldn't be there. 100,000. So I'm going to do top and bottom out. So I'm going to have 15 being divided by, and out here I'm going to put 100,000. And as you can see, that's a really big number. So we're not going to be able to divide into that. So we got to get some help. Okay. So we're going to put a decimal and a zero. And as soon as you do that, because there's a whole number out here, you bring that decimal up. Okay, and we know 100,000 can't go into 15, so let's put a zero, multiply for zero, subtract, we get 15, and then we bring down for 150, still doesn't work, put a zero, we we'll multiply for zero, subtract, we get 150, add another zero, we're now at 1500, okay, still not going to work. Multiply for zero. We're going to keep this going for a while. Add another zero. Bring down. Now we're at 15,000. So we're getting a little bit closer. Just give me one second. 15,000. And then we're going to put a zero here. Multiply for zero. Subtract. Get 15,000. And one more zero. There we go. So now, as you can see, we have 150,000, which that finally will go into there, right? It finally do its division. So let's put a 1 right here. And if we do 100,000 times 1, we get 100,000. So right here, I'm going to subtract 100,000 from this number, 0, 0, 0, 0, 5. Okay. So we're now at um, 50,000, which again, it would not work. Okay, so we got to subtract. We bring down another zero. See, and now we're at 500,000. Okay, so remember, after you do subtraction, which in this case, we had got 50,000, and that's too small for 100,000 to divide into it, I had to get some more help. So I subtracted. I brought down another zero. So you can see that real quick. I'm going to zoom out. Sorry, zoom out. So you can see everything. Okay. So now, last step is this is 500,000. I'm going to put a comma so you can see that. So now we want to put a 5 over that 0 that I brought down. And now we will get no remainder because 100 times 5 is 500,000. So we'll get 0. Okay, so the answer to this one, okay, is basically um, all of those decimals. We'll get 0 point, there's 3 decimals, and then 1, 5. And that is the answer that's on the answer key, okay? And then remember those place values. So this would be the tenths, this is the hundreds, this is the thousandth, the ten thousandths, the hundred thousandths. So that to say this number, it's 1,500 thousandths, okay, for number 23. So that completes everything on page one. And again, I said you guys have to do these on your own and just check with the answer key, okay? So now let's switch pages. This is the last page for the review. I'm going to zoom in. Okay, so for the top one, it's saying again, they want us to divide this decimal into another decimal. So we got to do this 69 thousandths being divided into uh, this number here, 3,174 uh, ten thousandths. Okay, so again, we're just going to do the, I think I've said it in class, DMSB. That's the division cycle. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. Okay. 
All right, so now I'm going to just come to this space here. I have 0 0.069 dividing into 0 0.3174. The decimal's a little bit darker. Okay, here we go. So remember, however many swings you do here is the same number of swings you need to do inside of the division house. So we're going to swing one, two, three swings. So I'm going to swing one, two, three swings. The decimal is going to end up there, and then I will move it up. Okay, so then I have to rewrite everything. So three swings there, three swings there. So this now will change to a 69 because I do want a whole number on the outside. And inside is going to be 317 with a decimal 0.4. Bring this up. And so now we know 69 can't go into 31. We're trying to do 69 into 317. But we got to figure out how close can we get. So let's do some scratch work. 69 times, let's try 3. So if I do 69 times 3, this is 27, 18, 19, 20. So I can do a little bit more. Let's try 69 times, hmm, I guess let's try 4, because I was going to say 5. Let's do 5. 69 times 5, we get 45. 5 carry a 4. And as you can see, 34, we overshot it, okay? So I'm going to just cheat a little bit here and subtract 69 to get 69 times 4. Maybe that will be confusing for people, so let me just do it. 69 times 4. So you don't see me subtract 69 away. This is 36. 24 plus 3, 276. That's as close as we're going to get. So we're going to put a 4 right here. We multiply for 276. We're subtracting now. Okay. So we'd have a 1. We need to borrow here. This becomes 11. 11 minus 7 is 4. Okay. So we now have subtracted. We're going to bring down this 4. And now we got to figure out how many times can 69 go into 414. Well, I know 5 was 345. So let's see what uh, 69 times 6 is just real quick. I'm going to move that out of the way. 69 times 6. 9 times 6 is 54. So 4 carry the 5. 36 plus 5, what do you know? 41. So um, it goes in there six whole times with no remainder. So we multiply, subtract, no remainder. So the answer to this one, the answer is uh, 4.6 for number 28. It's pretty cool. So this one is 4.6. All right, so let's look at a few word problems. Okay, I'm not going to do all of them. It says an advertisement states that television sets are on sale at this particular store. The prices are the following. It's this price for a 13 inch, $208.95 for a 19 inch, and so forth. They want you to estimate to the nearest 10 the total cost of one 19 inch set and one 50 inch set, okay? And it says round to the nearest 10, right? So that means the change or the cents don't matter. So let's look at the 19 inch. So according to this, the 19-inch one, I'm going to just underline it, sorry, this is $208.95. So if I had to think about rounding that to the nearest tenths, in my mind I'm telling myself, well, you know, I'm either going to be at 200 or 210. And guess what? 208, especially if I have the 95 cents, that's basically $210. So this one is 210 for the 90-inch. Okay, now when we look at the next one, for the next one, we're going to look at the 50 inch. So for the 50 inch, I'm going to find where that information is, right here. That just should jump out to you. That is $520, okay? So for this one, we're going to put 520. I'm so sorry. Let me write the actual number out. And again, I'm rounding this to $520. And now I'm just going to add them together because they said they want the total right here, the total cost. So if I add 210 plus 520, that's easily going to be $730. That's the answer. So this was just estimating, and then we know how to add.
It's easy. Okay, but just be be clear. When they say the tens place, they want you to round to where it something stops here. Okay, so in this case, two ten. In this case, it was five twenty. All right. So now, let's look at number thirty. Mr. Chung grosses five hundred dollars a week. Uh, if his take-home pay is four hundred and eight dollars and seventy-nine cents, so of course they take some taxes away from him. How much money was deducted? from his gross weekly pay. Well, that's a pretty straightforward one. I'm not going to do it. It's just subtraction. So I'm going to put right here by this problem. Subtract. Okay, because they want to know how much money was taken out for taxes. But let me at least show you the setup. You're going to put the greater value on top. We'll put some decimals because as you can see, the pay that he has, it has some change in it, right? So remember, when you're subtracting numbers and they have decimals, you have to line them up. So just go ahead and remember, go where the money is. You can't subtract here, here, here. You can't take any money away from zero, so you got to subtract from the five and then check and see what you get. Let's move on to number 31. For number 31, it says, find fractional notation. So it says something with fractions. Put that word there. So find fractional notation for the ratio. All right, you need not simplify, so we don't have to reduce anything. So here we go. Of a family's 929 weekly income, so this is our total for the week, $93 usually goes towards groceries. What is the ratio of the amount of, sorry, of the amount spent on groceries to weekly colon, uh, weekly income? As soon as you see that word to, that's a colon. So let me read the question again because I was kind of blundering over. What is the ratio? of the amount spent on groceries to weekly income. Well, guess what? Right here's the information. So amount spent on groceries, that's this number, because it says right here, usually goes towards groceries. So we're going to write 93, then we put our colon, and then the next one, the weekly income, is this part right here. That's the 929. So this is how a ratio looks. It has a left colon and then a right. But of course they want it in a fraction, so that's all we're going to do. Numerator over denominator. That's the answer, and they said don't reduce it. All right, so now let's look at number 32. Last basketball season, Danny scored 866 points in a total of 70 games. The question is, what, is, what was the rate in points per game? I can't stress this enough. The question again, what was the rate in points per game. So we want points per game. I'm going to write that right here. Points per game, which believe it or not, you can sit back and think of that like a fraction. That word per is like the division. So they want points over the number of games. Points per game. So we know here's our total number of points, the 866. So I'm going to put 866 in the numerator. The number of games that he played right here, it says 70 games. So we're going to put 70 on the bottom. And because we have a fraction, and look what the question asks, round to the nearest tenth. So I want something with a decimal. So I have to do TiVo. Okay, so I'm going to switch over real quick and do this problem. So for this one... I'm going to do top and bottom out. So I have 866 over 70. So this is going to go inside, 70 outside. 70 goes into 86 one time. Multiply for 70. Subtract. That's going to leave me with 16. Bring down. Now I already know that 70 times 2 is 140. And if I do anything greater than that, like 70 times 3, that's 210. So that's too much. So let's go in here two times for 140. Subtracting now, okay, because we multiplied. There's nothing to bring down right now, so let's do our subtraction. So we get 6, and we get a 2. Okay, now if I want to make a decimal, this is where I need help, because 70 cannot go into 26. So we'll put our decimal and our 0, which means we put it right here, bring it up and bring down the help, okay? So now how many times can 70 go into 260? Well, I already said that 70 times three is 